It's good to be. It's good to be. It's good to be. We good to go? Mm-hmm. All right, let's do this. Ready to lock in? Let's go. All right. Hello and welcome back to another 5K tennis discussion. I just realized that I still have kind of a lost voice. From yelling yesterday? From yelling a little bit yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, welcome to another 5K tennis discussion. Today is, what day is it? Today's Tuesday. All right. No, it's Monday. March 8th. Tuesday, <laughs> March the 8th. Um, and Duh, it's right there. Oh, it is right there. Uh, yes. Thank you. Speaking of right there, thanks to Kenny Daughtery, longtime friend of ours that uh, built us a computer. He's a computer guy and built us a computer to install at uh, the club that we teach um, to have in our pro shop that is um, going live soon. All right. So much love to you, Kenny. Going live soon. Going live soon. I don't know. <laughs> Might take another two months. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, I, I I lost my voice a little bit last night. I was I was doing a little yelling at a tournament we went to. I won't get into that, but I, I was reminded once again about the echelons of tennis players from an economic standpoint. In some areas, when you go, uh, those of um, those of the the people that don't, I guess fit in with the Joneses or just totally. It, it kind of makes you realize, no wonder um, going back to the Serena Venus thing. I'm so happy they, they, they uh, brought minorities into the sport um, because it kind of reminds you that tennis used to be just a country club thing. Um, a Caucasian sport, which is not, I mean, it shouldn't be, it should be just like every sport is for everybody. You know, it brought me back to, uh, those times where uh, people with a different status were not supposed to play the sport. It, it's, I don't enjoy going there. I, I don't enjoy going there. The vibe is so bad in that place. Yeah. We, we heard some things like um, from the opposing team that, wow, this is a waste of time. These people have no chance. Uh, wow. Look at their outfits, uh, stuff like that. Anyway, we're not going to get into that. We're all positive. Let's go. Let's get a Ric Flair. Woo. Come on, Ric Flair. Let's go. All right. Uh, also starting out today with a shout out to those in Ukraine. And I wanted to also bring up an article of, of, about not the, the issue going on with Ukraine and Russia, but actually to do with Indian Wells and, and a couple of players um, that are elite players, top players in the world. Uh, I'll mention one WTA player and one ATP, ATP player. Um, so I have an article here and, and I'm going to show you it's an article. Uh, with with it titled, and, and I'll read you that title, uh, and let's have a quick discussion on your thoughts on the title of this Daily Mail article. Um, here's the title. Indian Wells may have to confront the squirm-inducing prospect of a Russian or Belarusian player lifting the trophy while bloodshed in Ukraine goes on with Daniil Medvedev top seed in the men's draw and Irina Sabalenka among women's favorites. Think about their, that for a moment process that um and what are your thoughts on that as clickbait to read an article about would you click on it do you have any care to read such horse shit i i I don't think it matters if either one won what's the big deal who cares that the war has nothing to do with them nothing i mean they're just people again i mean it's not their fault that one's from belarus and one's russian i mean it's like i told justin it's like going back to 9 11 just because the twin towers got bombed you know doesn't mean that every Muslim is bad. I mean, everybody is, um, we are all individuals. That doesn't mean anything, you know? Reading stuff like this reminds me of what the media has done to Novak Djokovic, his entire career. Um, the politis- the politicization, p- politicizing tennis or any sport for that matter, it's something we've always, Carla, you and I have always disagreed with. Um, we've, we have, we've, we've had Djokovic on, uh, the outside looking in by the media for years because of ge- geopolitical implications. Um, and now we're, we're putting headlines and the Western media that indicate we will have to deal with a Belarusian or a Russian champion. Like, wh- what does that even matter? What, what, what do these two hardworking athletes have, have to do with something? And I, I guarantee you neither of them probably live there year round. I mean, what what does that really have to do with with them as as athletes? 
I don't understand. I, and, and it's and there's nothing new about this. We've seen it over the decades in the Olympics with ice hockey, especially some of the big USA Russia type um, uh, matches. And, and we won't get into that. But what what what? How more disrespectful could you be to to a couple of athletes? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, and, and by the way, any thoughts as a whole on um, the uh, – uh, I know there's always two sides to every story. Um, any thoughts as a whole on where the world goes with the ongoing conflict? So take take kind of a break from the hideous article title and and, and where, where where do we go? Does, does, the, does the conflict glow? Are we looking at like World War III um, seriously um, or, or not? Think about that. I, I don't know. I, I, I think – and I'm not getting involved in politics or anything, but I, any war is bad. Any any war is sad on both sides. If we think about it, both sides, you know, people suffering, people dying. I mean, it's it's not a good thing for anybody. Yes. Be, be mindful that um, to sum it up, we won't get into geopolitics here, but the world has been in economic turmoil for, for quite a while. What better way to distract, to distract everyone from that? Um, than than having conflict and gas prices are going up. I, I saw um, someone post something on Facebook. You know, in Alabama, the minimum wage is very very low, and uh, the cost of living, you know, it's getting higher. And some of these people who are making eight dollars an hour, let's say eight dollars an hour, they're going to work. They're getting in their car. The gas is going up. We're at almost four dollars. It's kind of hard to pay your bills if your gas is $4 and going up. Exactly. And especially if your job, let's say, is about 30 minutes away, that, that adds up, right? Yes. We, Not only is gas going up, food's going up. Yeah. Everything else going up. And some food is even hard to find. Yeah. Um, I, well, I won't get into our personal diet, but you know, we eat chicken, and, and, and a lot of times we can't even find chicken at, at even a semi-affordable price. Um, some people, I guess you would say, Carla, Carla indicated the prices of gas – um, and what if you make minimum wage? I guess it's safe to say that some people are, are in essence, paying to go to work. Um, and most of them are paying to go to work simply because they may have some half ass um, uh, incentives like insurance. You know, they may be getting some health care or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and even that is a dicey situation. Uh, I know people that um, have health care uh, costs of twenty seven hundred a month for family insurance, and every time they go to the doctor, even with insurance, it costs them five and six hundred dollars. So do the math on that. You're talking three thousand dollars a month simply to have insurance and to go to the doctor. Anyway, Alex Pierre says during World War One and Two, we didn't have social media to communicate, so we had wars. Now we have social media, so it's a bit easier to communicate with no war needed or wanted. Great statement. And now, and now people fight wars every day. Um, that are really some of them such fake wars because they do they battle it out on social media. So you know, you, you I think we have this word trolls these days. You know, what was a troll back in the day? The neighborhood bully. You know what what you, so what, what's the definition of a troll? Someone that jumps in people's conversations and you know and, and is always negative or something. So, That's the definition of it. But when I think of a troll, I think of the story when you were trying to cross the bridge. Remember the kids story you were trying to cross the bridge and the troll would come out and charge you to cross the the, the toll he would it don't they do that to people actually in like honduras and mexico now didn't you say you took a trip to uh, uh they're not called trolls though that's just um so they um, would be that is um what is that called they they would hold you hostage to get it not so, hold you hostage we're, we're making, but they wouldn't let you go through yeah, yeah. She, she drove with her father uh what's up nathan she drove with her father from i think new york city all the way to honduras yeah, yeah. so you're talking a really long trip through mexico and so forth and i guess you, you got to give them money you, you got to give, give them money. money to cross the bridge to cross right? the to, to cross the border they're holding the bridge the hostage <laughs> Uh, I, I read that genius. Stromska has given all her prize money for the line final to the war. Yeah, I read that, and I read Kleisters also took any anybody any refugees, um, any tennis players. She said any tennis player was welcome to stay at her her um, academy, free uh, everything, food, whatever, shelter, everything, and allowed to train there. Excellent. We have we have a topic coming up on um, yes, Stromska tied to kind of her U Ukrainian roots, but more more so leading into Radha Khan who? Radha Khan who? You know, it, it's, I think now, since Radha Khan who's won the U.S. Open, um, people are still trying to make a case for her to be uh, the greatest thing uh, since sliced red as, as they did after the U.S. Open. 
just to keep trying to keep the narrative alive. Our narrative has been ever since that occurred. Wow. That was kind of lucky to say the least, given that Layla Fernandez was in the final as well. No disrespect to her. Uh, but I think Roberta Vinci was one that said herself, uh, an, an ex, you know, elite player that, you know, that was kind of flaky as well. But I think now we should start thinking about, um, Radikanu's fall from the top. Uh, not that she was ever at the top. She won a major, which is great, but at, she can't seem to do anything since then. And we said that would happen and it's still happening. I think we should start talking about Radikan. Who, who, who is that? Kind of like Andreescu. Who, who, who is that? And by the way, Andreescu is not playing Indian Wells. And I thought that that would be the proper time for her to return. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So anyway, we have a topic about that. I always thought she was a great player. I thought she had the firepower behind her. I really thought she had um, a great opportunity to be in the top ten. Who? Um, yes, Stremska. Oh yes, for sure. Yeah, I, I always, I always liked her game. I like her feistiness. So yeah. I never had a problem with her. Yeah, your strength. But is I think that whole thing, you know, where they suspended her, kind of ruined a lot of stuff for her. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, closing, closing the topic on um, the Ukraine crisis and so forth. But back to just for a moment, people paying to go to work, right? We factored this in today. So we live about 35 miles away from where we work. The gas prices here on Dolphin Island, which is a small town in, in Southern Alabama, were right at $4 a gallon. So do the math every day, just for us to drive there and back is roughly what $12. And then we do a lot of driving in between there. So you have to factor that in. And sometimes you have to ask yourself, geez, you know, um, I think for us it's worth it though. Oh, it's definitely yeah. worth it. But I'm just saying you have to factor it in. Oh, yeah. If someone making eight bucks an hour, yeah, it's not worth it. All right. Um, let's let's go to Yastramska. Radukanu, Radukan who, sorry, has a buy in the first round. The women's draw is released. And uh Yastremska uh, must face, and I have the I have the draws here. And sorry, I should have had it ready, but Yastramska faces in the first round. If someone already has it, tell me. Yeah, okay. Stramska faces uh, Caroline Garcia, the French, the French lady. Yeah, and the first does, round. She should do fine. Yeah, so I, I think Yastremska will surely get through that match, if not for herself, but I think she'll do it for her her fight of her country, right? Mm -hmm. So would you assume um, that Yastremska and Radakanu would meet in the second round? Obviously, Radakanu has a bye, which still I don't get why she's getting a bye. I get she won the US Open, but like what else? I think that she, uh, Radakanu has a lot of chance of losing. I mean, uh, like Jean said, she's had a lot of um, injuries recently. You know, um, she could definitely lose to any of those two. Is Yastremska still hitting with uh, Sasha Bajin? No, no, Sasha Bajin was with, with Plishkova. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I think uh, any anything's possible. I was looking at the, I you know, just to show you that I've been out of the tennis loop. Like he said, oh, the Indian Wells is happening. I said, wait a minute. Didn't we just have Indian Wells? I thought Indian wait, Wells let, came let, out later okay, on. Let, let's correct that. Just because we've had a comment before, like, you know, from trolls, you know, mm -hmm. how, how can you do a tennis show when you continuously say you're out of the tennis loop? Let's clarify that. Meaning we, we like coach I'm not work, paying we, attention to yeah, the tennis we, tournaments. Yeah, we coach full time. We live a tennis life and we tennis nonstop. Um, we got back from a tournament last night with our kids. So. Um, it's just that it's just that we haven't had a lot of time to keep up with the everyday news announcements and so forth. And plus, there's like 27 or 30 YouTubers out there that compete for live streaming and they compete for draw releases. And it's just like you can find out little bits by just choosing one of the 27. Right. So, yeah. Uh, uh, and thank those 27 for that. Uh, but, yes, I, I don't um, I, I don't keep up with it. Um, outside of the real important tournaments as much as we did not terribly long ago. Well, I, I I was noticing you mentioned something to me, and I was like, "Holy crap!" Osaka against Stevens. Oh, Sloan that, Stevens, Osaka that's, first that's round. That's a shitty first round for them. Didn't that happen not terribly long ago? Didn't yeah. Osaka and Stevens have a first round? No, no, it was, was it? Not. It was in Madison Keys and Sloan Stevens that, mm, that Sloan Stevens a had tournament. a big matchup in like her last tournament. Was it the U.S. Open? Who did those? Who did Sloan Stevens? Who did she play? I don't. Who did she play in uh, at the Australian Open? I thought it was like a big match at the Australian. Open. Yeah, was didn't Sloan Stevens get? A was it Sloan Stevens against Raducanu? I thought that's what it was. It might. It might have yeah. been. Osaka should win. Alex Pierre definitely. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I, I think I think that's not going to be a problem at all. But I wouldn't be surprised if Sloane Stevens did well. Would you yeah. be shocked? Would you be shocked if Sloane no, Stevens? No, I won? don't. I wouldn't be shocked, but I don't think she has a shot. I'm just saying. By the way, speaking of abhorrent behavior, um, 
Zverev's puppy hater. Uh, what's what's he look like? A linguine noodle. Uh, what, what's his other another names? Lendl firing. Mm -hmm. What's some other names for the guy? The Domestic abuse specialist. Uh, Zverev gets a kind of suspended suspension, if that makes any sense, for eight weeks um, from the tour if he acts out again. Right. Mm -hmm. We watched him blast his racket aggressively on an umpire's chair right next to his feet. Did Zverev get the appropriate punishment? I don't even know why. That was just like a warning to me, right? Look, I'm not for anybody being punished. We've all been punished in life. Life is hard. A booster uh, ref. Yeah, a booster ref. Yeah. But, but yeah, that's a booster ref. That's, that's a pretty good name there. Good job, yeah. Jose P. Abuser ref. That is classic, actually. I had to think about it. Abusador. Él es un abusador. Ooh. <laughs> what does that mean? He's an abuser. <laughs> so you said that in Spanish? Yeah. Because it sounded better. It sounded close to Spanish. How do you Spanish. say it in Spanish? Abu a abusador. 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 <laughs> Sounds good to me. Did he get the did he get the pro appropriate did he get the appropriate discipline? Um, you know, I I saw an article where Serena said had had it been her, she would have gone to jail. <laughs> Maybe so, she would have. Yeah. yeah, you know. Okay. Do you think that Serena's statement, um, Serena in, in, in I mean, she's right if you think about it. Yeah, and if you don't know what we're alluding to, so Zverev was given his punishment for um, assaulting the, the, the referee's chair right near his feet. By the way, if you were someone like me, let's just, Carla, ask you this question. If Zverev came anywhere near me and was beating near my feet with a tennis racket, what would have been my response? You would have called the cops. Uh, or started beating him with my tennis racket. No. One of the two. Um, and no, I mean, all jokes aside, I wouldn't beat anybody with a tennis racket. But I can assure you that ref had a lot more patience than I would have because I would have came down out of the chair for sure. So I applaud the ref. Uh, but Serena Williams and her response to being interviewed about uh, his punishment um, said something along the lines of, if I had done that, then I probably would have been put in jail. Um, agree or disagree? I agree. It'd be hard to disagree with that. Could you imagine if that was Serena beating that umpire's chair? Oh, she would. She done. would never play again. She would be. They would have said this ghetto girl from they, from. <laughs> they pro they probably would have. The article would have been like, yeah, this ghetto girl from the Compton's. You know, uh, what would. No surprise, Serena acted this way. Oh, yeah, it's bound to happen. No surprise. You yeah. know, she's had a history of violence and threatening umpires and line studs, whatever. Yeah, it would be. It, look, she probably would not have been ever elected into the Hall of Fame. Uh, she would have been just tarnished. So yeah, we would yeah, have I, heard all the tennis commentators say, yes, you know, garbage, shame on her. She should never play tennis again. But because it's puppy hater, yeah, it's all right. Yeah. Think, like he says, abuse ref. Yeah, and, and, and uh, Josh uh, Heineck sounds, sounds like Heineken. It's a good beer. And, and the UK, Div Div means idiot. I, I like learning different different uh, vernacular from afar. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. All right. So, did he get the appropriate punishment again? In, in, I don't even know why look, they bother because they're gonna yeah. forget about it. They're gonna forget about it. You know they yeah. will. Yeah. In eight weeks, if he does something like that again, he gets suspended. Suspended for how long? Eight weeks. Oh, so if he does that, he gets suspended for eight weeks. Yeah. So in other words, they're like, okay, you know, we'll we'll find you, and if you do it again, we'll you know give you an eight week suspension. Look, I don't believe that anyone should get punished in in a sport for really anything. Um, I, look, I, 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 I don't like to hate on anyone for anything. Believe me, I've lost my cool, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I say things I regret. I'm an expert at Well, it. I guess John McEnroe got away with murder because he just yeah, so, a lot worse. You know, I, I, I'm all for it. But, but, because, uh, and, and I'll use myself for an example. Carla and I are a mixed family, so she's Spanish and I'm, I'm Caucasian. Not that that matters, but we have heard so much, so many things over our family's history with with our five children about mm -hmm. oh you know your kid looks like a mexican or who is this guy with the you know we've heard it all um so life is tough on all levels but the 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 dichotomy here is as zverev was just you know no no, no big deal just don't do it again you know here's a, a, a minor fine and um and, and you know just don't do it again but look at serena and and her 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 reply to that and understand that if serena williams would have done that um, she would be all over 
um, the media. She would be front page, not the sports page. She would be front page. She was front page when she just threatened to ram a ball down uh, ball the down the, the, the ball person's throat at, at the U.S. Open when she was playing Kleisters. Anyway, I think it would have if it would have been um, Serena or Djokovic, the same outcome would have happened. There. Yeah, you know, I mean, Djokovic would have been equally as bad as Serena. Um, Gene Schwartz says not all the ATPs, not at all the ATPs, a weak organization. He's on pro. He is on probation. Would have been better if he got than if he got suspended because he would it. What it would know how to it feels to be hitting an umpire and what the consequences are. So if they would have if they would have put him on probation, oh, okay, well, yeah. I mean, they should have just told him, hey, we're fining you a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, whatever the fee. Well, is. I think his it's fine pocket was, change. I think his fine was like twenty five thousand U.S. or something. Okay, whatever, and you can't play for a certain amount of weeks. That would have been better. You know, and, and look at, at at his young age, he's worth so much. I mean, he's already the fine's not going to. Did bother you not him. hear that the I read an article where the, he was playing a tournament. The Brazilians were chanting the late the lady's name that he choked. Oh, really? Yeah, they were they were taunting him. Wow. I mean, they should have already investigated that as well. I mean, you know, he's not a football player. Yeah. And to, to speaking of taunting, um, we were at an event recently and I, and I don't want to get into the event or what, but here's, here's taunting and how it can be biased as well. So you, you go to places and you go to tournaments and you watch kids play. And then the whole place is full of parents and teammates of, of, of the, of the place where you're at. Uh, you travel over there and all of them are chanting and cheering and da, 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 da. And then when any one of us say, great job, whatever, then we look like assholes. And, and, and this is, this is um, what I'm talking about. The, the division within the game itself on, on multiple levels, there's a lot of division within the game on multiple levels. And, and this, and this dichotomy here is exemplifies that. What? Don't ever go watch a match with Justin ever. Because you might get kicked out of the complex. Look, it I, when, when <laughs> last night I didn't want to know. I didn't want to be around him. It's okay when you're when you're <laughs> when you when you have a whole bunch of people that are dissing your players, and at the same time the match that you're watching, you've got someone calling balls out that are six inches <laughs> in simply because they are so worried about losing, and then you get chastised for even saying let's go when all of, when he everyone screams. else is doing it. Finally, I just said let's go. Okay, he screamed so loud three times that I think. They heard him, you know, down the street. No, more than down the street. In the next neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, also, too, uh, speaking of athletes sometimes behaving badly, um, there is a receiver, a wide receiver. A lot of you may not watch football. I personally love football, American football. Uh, I like soccer, too, but I don't know the rules of it. And it's kind of hard to follow because I don't know the rules. Uh, I should learn. That's an excuse. But um, a wide receiver that plays for the Atlanta Falcons that went to the University of Alabama um, was a standout, won a national championship, Calvin Ridley. Um, and his, uh, what, first two years and now his second year in the NFL just got suspended for an entire year. For his stupidity. <laughs> well, he, he, he bet, he bet, he bet, he gambled on a football game. Now, now I ask you, I ask you this, this receiver is a multi-million dollar athlete, mm -hmm. uh, probably is under, you know, a 10, $20 million contract. Uh, again, I didn't do my math on that, but I'm sure I'm not far off. Right. And he gambles on a football game and he loses an entire year. He suspended for a year. Right. But we can wax our rackets, wax our rackets, wax our rackets on um, chairs of umpires, and um, it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. What is that? So he says he's in a one-year probation. That's, he just, he just. Uh, I think that's one of those. Is I, it? No, no, that's no, that's a comment. No, I think oh. he just paid forty bucks. Is that right? If so, I want to know how you're – Gene, watch out. Uh, okay, Gene just paid 40 bucks. It came up green. It just – it says Z-A-R, 40. I, uh, maybe that's South American currency or South African currency. But let's read it. He is on a one-year probation, which means he can still play events. But if he behaves in an aggressive manner again, then he gets an eight-week suspension. So yeah. So probation is, and, and Gene, thank you. I, I, I think we've never had one of the, I think B dog has done this before, but we've never had a computer. So now we can read this. And oh, I super chatted. Okay. okay. Yeah. See, thank we you, haven't Gene. seen that before. We, we really haven't. Thank you, Gene, for sure. Um, but 
we always used our cell phone and it wouldn't come up on our, this is the first time we've done a show in almost four years where we actually had a computer. We always did it with my phone and had to apologize when it cut out. Right. Mm -hmm. So it came up as a green box on our screen mm -hmm. and then it had his comment in the green box. Excellent. Muchos gracias. By the way, Gene um, is one of the two people that do our fantasy team and $500 cash giveaway competitions keeping score of that. And by the way, if you don't play it for the French or you haven't played it, we are playing it for the French open. Carla and I are going to give away $500 in cash um, to anyone that can predict the finals and winners. And then we're going to do our fantasy team competition as always, where two winners will win. Uh, I won't surprise them yet, but I may even up, I'm, I may even raise the two winners pots for the fantasy team. I might actually pick it up uh, again. And Gene is a big part of that. So is Thomas Chi if he's out there. Um, anyway, but um, your thoughts on the football player losing a year. It's the rule, Justin. It's, okay. it's the rule. Why? You know, I was watching ESPN today and I was listening to the commentators. I don't really care much for football, but I was listening to them. And one guy said, you know, Usually when you bet, you know, you have Vegas, they're giving you the, you know, the tips and all that. But this guy's playing for the team. He's in the team. He would know the most because he's in the team. He knows what's going on in the locker room. I just think you're stupid. If you're making that much money, why would you even bet? Yeah. I thought that was just stupid. It, that was just yeah. stupid. He wasn't thinking so stupid, but he's paying the price for it. You know, and there should be rules in tennis. You smash a racket against somebody, hit him on the foot. You should pay the price for that. Yeah. And, and I mean, if the guy wants to, if I was the umpire, I'd get a lawyer and say I was traumatized. Now I can't sit on that umpire yeah. chair because I'm scared what's going to happen to me. Yeah. And I and, and he and sue him and exactly. win. And he would win. Yeah. He's being nice. He could sue Zevrev right now and would win. And win. He would win just yeah. because yeah. Zevrev would not want to take it to court. Just, just like the lady at the U.S. Open could sue Novak Djokovic could win. right now. For, could win. And, and could win. Now, yesterday, I think this is kind of interesting that we just came up on this interesting idea. Um, yesterday, Carl and I were driving, and we have Sirius Radio, so we were in our car, and a song came on from the group Millie Vanilli. Does anybody remember Millie Vanilli? No, you know it's true. Yeah. No, wait, wait, we can't, we can't, we can't. What? Oh, yeah, it'll, yeah, it'll, yeah, 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 pick it up. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, 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 I love you. You remember yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. They did Blame It on the Rain and, um, and, and, yeah, yeah. and a lot of other stuff. Yeah, anyway, yeah. so what happened to Millie Vanilli, if you're not aware, Millie Vanilli – were, were lip syncers um, and they sold, you know, uh, tens of millions of albums or, and, and so forth. Um, and number one hits on the billboard when I was a kid for um, certain songs that ultimately they were lip syncing. So how did they get caught? Well, they, they, they got caught uh, because they were performing and then the CD started skipping and they were trying to, it was like, e -e -e -e, and they were still trying to act through it. And then finally they were like, Oh, we're busted. And they walked off stage. And the rest is history. One one of the two artists, um, I think, committed suicide. It, and I hate to say that, or passed away um, way too early. And it, it, it destroyed their lives, right? It really hurt their lives. There's documentaries on this and so forth. Now, fast forward to today. We were talking about, Carla and I were talking about how now if something um, that you do, such as in their case, lip syncing and get busted, it ruined their life then. I was telling Carla if they did that today, more than likely, it would make them even more successful. Yeah. Why? Because they can write a book on, oh, my mental health is jacked up. Oh, <laughs> that's why it, I did you know, it. That's why I, I did it. I, I, just, I was forced to do it. You I know, didn't... I was in poverty and what can I do? I was yeah. forced. I was, you know, anyways, I, th I told him, I thought uh, music, CNC Music Factory did the same thing, but he's saying no. I, I but I thought they were lip syncing. Yeah, as I don't well. think CNC did that. Uh, I thought they were, I thought someone, Jesus, do you know? I mean, I, I think they did. I yeah. thought it was a big lady that was singing and the skinny lady was that was lip singing. I'm, I, I thought that's what it was. I'm not I'm not too uh, sure about about the CNC Music Factory one, but Millie Vanilli careers were destroyed because of you know something they did. But but what I'm getting at is uh, you remember when you know Osaka did her you know oh my mentality my mental issues and and how many athletes are doing that these days simply so they don't have a falling out with the team or they can blame their laziness. So oh. if I coach and, and like I did a bad lesson, I could just say, you know, oh, right now my, man, mental, my mental health well, is just not good yeah. right now. So, you know, next time I next time I get thrown out of a facility for actually cheering for my students, um, just like everyone else is, um, next time I'll be like, you know, it's because my mental health is screwed up. Uh, but this is what I'm getting at, though. Today, you can have epic failures and then get even richer for writing a story. Mm -hmm. Back then, if you really jacked off, 
you, you were you were gone, you know, see you later. But now we can write it off as some emotional distress. Uh, going back to the Indian Wells, I see here that Gene says, I think Nadal wins Indian Wells. I, I don't even know why Nadal is playing the Indian Wells. It's on hardcore. We got the clay season coming around. I think if I were him, I would save his body. I wouldn't try to push too hard. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Uh, Nick 37 says, at Gene Schwartz, Semi lo loses to Mateo Fabio. If, if they play him, Rafa isn't interested in a thousand at this point. I mean, I don't know why Rafa's playing. <clears throat> Yeah, and why why is Nadal playing? You have to ask yourself, is this – in my opinion, and I'm not a huge Nadal fan, I think it's kind of stupidity. Mm -hmm. um, he just won uh, the Australian Open. Clay court season is coming up. He's never – he's not going to catch Djokovic's week at number one. I mean, what plus is – hard court tears up your yeah, body and he, He's risking wear and tear on his problematic body. If, if I were his team and I were his – uh, crew. Uh, and maybe, maybe, you know what, Here, here's a better take at it. Maybe um, like most of these guys, especially the big three or the big two now, or whatever it's left 0.75 of four, mm -hmm. um, whatever the math is, maybe he's doing it because he has a huge sponsorship contract to wear Nike's new outfit and then Nike's new colorway shoe and maybe the new Babolat stick or whatever, that's going to get major media coverage at, at Indian Wells for the first time in what, three years at the right time. So maybe it has to do with super big incentives of getting that million dollars just to show up from the tournament itself. Maybe it has something to do, but I have a, I have a hard time believing a million dollars. That's nothing. I have a hard time believing for that, him that he's going to work a million percent hard to win Indian Wells. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if he had a first or second round loss. Surely he's going to have a buy. Well, I don't know. It's a 128 draw. Uh, is there I, yeah, there are buys. Gene Indian. says, well, I think he has a big following in America, too. And Indian Wells is a perfect hardcore for him. Yep. Too. It's slow and gritty. I, I still don't. Nick 37 says Rafa doesn't care about Indian Wells. Novak either. I, I agree. Nick 37. He said his exactly. winners are Rulev and Layla. Yep. I, I, I just don't know why. We just had Indian Wells and here we great. have That's a again. great comment. That's a great uh -huh. comment. Uh, Nick 37 is correct. I, there's no way you can tell me Rafa is going to have a, you know, a, a terrible post-match interview if he loses to Cam Nori in the first, whatever his draw is going to be. You can't tell me now, Nick 37, the Leila Fernandez prediction, I would be willing to offer you. She won. She just won. She just defended her tournament. If that's cool. Great. I like Layla Fernandez a, a lot. I really do. I would have rather, I had no disrespect, but I would rather have seen Layla Fernandez win the U S open than, uh, Raducanu. Raducanu turned into a marketing extravaganza and, and it started to ruin her focus, in my opinion. We talked about this right after she won. I think Layla Fernandez could have kind of backed that up. Do you know what? I, I like her fight better. Layla Fernandez's father is emotional. He gets into it like I do. Uh, I, I like her whole crew, her whole team. Um, shit, I forgot what I was talking about. Um, Nadal playing. Um, the Rublev win, I see. Leila Fernandez, I just don't. Um, I, I think there's a lot of players that are, are a good bit better than Fernandez that are going to be in this tournament and that really could use the extra, what, $1.5 in prize money. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really tough for, for Fernandez to win it. But I'm willing to offer you $20. You don't have to give me anything. If your prediction is correct, Nick 37, if Leila Fernandez wins that tournament, I'll and send. Rublev, uh, well, I'm not even worried about that one. I'm just sticking with Layla. I mean, mm -hmm. if you get them both, even better. But if Layla Fernandez wins Indian Wells, I'll send you twenty dollars by means of Venmo or PayPal. Um, I can't really. I mean, whatever. I think we've done it Western Union before, but it cost me that much just to send it. Mm -hmm. So I'll send you twenty bucks to American dollars by uh, PayPal or Venmo um, if if you get that right. Mm -hmm. um, thoughts on that? Do you think Layla Fernandez can win it? Mm -hmm. Why? Why? No, I think there's that um, she's not much better than most of those people there. On the, and anybody could win. Name five women's players that are in this round or in this um, draw of what? 128. It's a 1,000, so 128 in the draw. Name four players that are better than Fernandez. You, Any four. Uh, you've got uh, Osaka yeah. is one. Sabalenka. Uh, okay, yes. Yeah, better, better yes. Better than her, too. Yes. Azarenka. Yes. Uh, Zachary. Oh, uh, there you go. Okay. And there's and there's there's many more. You yeah. know, Kvitova's and Pliskova's. Uh, I mean, geez, you can have a really long Yastrzemska. Why not? Who if 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 Yastrzemska played 
Fernandez right Krijikova. now. Who, who yeah, do you who do you it. take? Who do you pick? Krijikova is another Krijikova, one. I mean. Good job, Jesus uh, yeah. Cruz Cabal. Exactly. Mm -hmm. There, there's a ton of them, and it's it's going to be really tough uh, for for her to do that. But I do think that Fernandez, in the long run, when we look back in history, if you if you took away Raducanu's U.S. Open that she got, you know, no, no disrespect, she mm -hmm. she won it. But if you took that away, I really think that Fernandez will end up being the better career player than Raducanu. But that's just a guess, and I may be wrong. Contabit, yeah. But another great one. Spiontek's yeah. another great one. There's, there's just so many. Yeah. Um, there's a lot. Nadal playing. How stupid is that on a scale of 1 to 10? 10. 10. <laughs> I'm not even happy he's playing yeah. it. Why? Yeah. You know uh, Djokovic is going to concentrate on clay. Like, mm -hmm. why even travel? Why even risk COVID? Yeah. I almost said the wrong thing. Who? Why risk COVID? Even though COVID, nobody's hearing about yeah, it. Yeah, and, and Gene Swart has another good one, Ostapenko intersection. By the way, if it, I, I do have a, a shout out to Ostapenko, maybe in a bad way, but I, I mean it well. Ostapenko looks incredibly out of shape. Um, she looks really, really too full of donuts. I mean that for, for real. She looks really, 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 really heavy. And and, and I don't think that. Maybe her thyroid or something. You don't I don't know. She, she but, could have some uh, health issue. COVID is canceled. <laughs> yeah. I almost said something bad. What's up, LS Fire? Yeah, like COVID. It's all right now. You know, we have a war. Nobody oh, Joanna. Can, no, Joanna Saw, what's up? Nobody's uh, getting COVID. She says know? that Joanna Saw says Fernanda might be tired. She didn't beat anyone stronger lately. What's up? Uh, Joanna's always uh, a lot of fun. Uh, but it, it is in Denmark. It's canceled. No more. What is? No more COVID. And in the UK. So we're good. I mean, here nobody wears masks. Like, you know, yesterday I went to pick up my daughter from uh, middle school to check her out early because she had a match. So I had to wear a mask to go in. But the principal opened the door with no mask and the lady next to her with no mask. And everybody inside had no mask, but I had to have a mask. How did this make sense? And the kids don't have a mask. Mm. How did this make sense? Didn't, didn't get that one. Have you seen Asta Bengal play this year? Yes, yes. we have. She, yes. she does need to lose about 20 pounds. Yeah. And again, maybe she has a thyroid problem or, you know, I don't know. Stress is killing her. You don't know. You you can't you can't be that out of shape. And, no vaccines and, anymore. No tests good. anymore. Well, did, I saw in Florida, they're saying the first state, Florida, said do not vaccinate your kids if they're healthy. Do not. Interesting stuff. Interesting. Like, what the Very hell? Very interesting stuff. Yeah. Uh, Nadal, Nadal's, uh, Nadal's um, reasons for playing must be contractually related uh, whether he's you know sporting his latest outfit you know for sales for nike or his latest um ba babylon for a racket for babylon or whether he's getting a, a player's fee just for showing up in other words because his ticket prices are really high um but i think that's probably it but if he actually goes forward and puts absolute 100 percent max effort playing three set matches all the way through the draw uh and then comes off of the hard court on to clay, uh, I, I think that he's asking for some soreness or, or some type of nagging injury at some point. I, I wouldn't play it, right? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't I play it. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer. Okay, um, talking about Daniil Medvedev for a moment. At the beginning of the show, we brought up an article about what would the world do if Daniil Medvedev or Arana Sabalenka won Indian Wells, we'd have to deal with, you know, a Russian and oh. Gee, Anyway, um, we're not talking about that again. We're bringing up the fact that Daniil Medvedev is number one in the world. D does everyone think that Daniil Medvedev, um, out of past number one players in the world, in other words, if you had a whole list of number one players in, in the past history, okay, mm -hmm. and you say, let's say you had a list of 10 players that were formerly number one in the world, you know, whether it's mm -hmm. Borg or you know, Lendl, whatever, where would the Neil Medvedev fit in on that list of number one players? Lendo's way better. This, well, when, where would he be like number 10? Yeah. You know, at the bottom. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's just one of those things, whether it's been COVID and, and, no, and, and, no, and, and he's not the one of the best players yeah, I've ever I, seen I, in my life. No, no, I can't say that. Oh my God. No. Yeah. Must reiterate again. It, it, Daniel Medvedev is very lucky to be at number. He's a great player. No, I, mean, I don't say that he's not lucky. Say, not I saying just he's think bad. That, I, I just he, think that in his era, you're telling him, whoa, whoa, whoa. He, he Djokovic, I don't say he's lucky. Djokovic, Djokovic lost 2000 points no, because I'm, he didn't play the Australian Open. I, I don't mean as number one, not lucky. What I mean being in the top, his error is weak. The only strong ones are 
again the old timers that are, yeah that have been that, that's what i'm talking about yeah. had medev have been in the era of where it was federer Djokovic, Nadal, at their young age, their Murray, Rorinka, and all of them. In their prime. He would not even be in the top five. He, he wouldn't be with them. That's what, uh, that's what I meant. And, and and why do we always say that? And I've said this a million times. I don't okay. think Daniel is better than Leighton Hewitt. That's a good one. Who, who I don't said, know who about said that. that? I don't a, know about that. You know, Leighton Hewitt but, had a fight but, through. But who just said Leighton Hewitt? Where do you see that? Nick 37. This is so weird because when I was, I had written this question and when I was writing the question, um, the first name I thought I of mean, I never liked was, was was could he have been better than Leighton Hewitt? But, but, that, but, had, but Leighton Hewitt thought. at least had a volley game, had volley. Yes, he could, and play, could play doubles. He could play the net. I mean, yeah. have, hopefully he's improving that. I don't think he's – I think I, I agree with you. He's lucky. I think he's in the right era where Djokovic is, you know, at the end and Nadal's at the end and all those players that we love are at their end. Yeah. And now you have little bitch boy Severa. Yeah. I mean, who else you have? Who else you have? Sissy Pass? Sissy Pass. <laughs> so, but look. When you men- have, who, what else do we have after that? Well, I mean, I can't even think of names because that's. Well, you know, where's TM at? You know, and there's the TM's list goes hurt. on. You know? done. No, look at Borna Chorich. He was hot, you know, yeah. and now he's not. Anyway, I, I like Borna Chorich, by do the way. Do you think he's better than Safin? Hell no. No, she's Safin's not. Safin's problem was mental. You know, he was good. He could beat you like any day. I mean, I think Safran, had he been more dedicated to tennis, his problem, he was a Nick Kyrgios sometimes. You know, he let his temper get out of Or sometimes he didn't want to practice. No. Marat Safran was a lot more talented. A lot more talented yeah. than Daniel Medved. Um I was thinking about how you always say Murat Safin is like the hottest man that's ever walked the face he's, of the earth. No, I don't know that he's the hottest man, but he is hot. Okay, so the, Medvedev's issue, and it always has been, and Novak Djokovic knows this very well. We've talked about it before. He is not very consistent inside inside the short court. So I, I don't like. <laughs> Great comment. I don't. I don't like. Um, I don't like um, players at the number one ranking in the world, even in the top five that have a difficult time playing the short court inside the service line. There are so many students that, that we have that come to us and have been playing a while and you know, they can't win any, they can't win any tournaments. It's, it's like they've been playing for a while and blah, 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 blah. And then you find out real soon that if you feed them a short ball, they come running in to get it and they set up for their big loopy stroke and they hit it over the fence or right to the top of the net. It's so important to learn the game um, from a angular deflection standpoint of the racket on the short court, half volleys, taking the ball low. When we were children playing, you know, you would hear the term all the time, no man's land. I think that term now is more antiquated because we get caught there a lot. Um, lighter rackets. Everybody than, gets caught there. We get caught there a lot. Lighter rackets, the strings are, are, are a little more snappier, especially if they're strung um, a little bit loosely, right? So anyway, they, you, you get the ball in a hurry. Um, not too terribly long ago, I was watching Kyrgios practice um, taking balls off the feet in three-quarter court. Uh, again, I don't like the term no man's land. Uh, that's kind of old, uh, and, I, and I think we should you know, play that area. But taking balls on the approach moving forward off the feet, half volleys, uh, swing volleys from the, from the middle of the uh, service box, uh, you name it. He, he has a tough time executing there at, at, at a high percentage. So Medvedev's Achilles heel is to draw him in and he comes from so far back behind the baseline. So he's putting so many miles on his shoes. Ultimately at his six foot six frame, he is going to start getting nagging injuries. It will happen. He's, you know, he got his major, uh, but playing his game deep, behind, he plays in a doll like game, mm-hmm. a big, powerful, uh, more aggressive than um, the doll, but he plays in a doll type mindset, very defensive, um, once, once you start adding up six foot six frame on, on, on a thin frame at that, he he'll start paying the price. I like uh, LS Fire's comment. Last really successful reverse cap wearing tennis player. Laugh out loud. That's a great one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't wear the cap reverse yeah. cause you're not going to win. Let's bring up a list. Tennis pros out there. Don't do it. Cause you're not going to win. Here, he, uh, so he asked how many slams LS Fire said how many slams will Alcaraz get at this point. It, it, it's so tough to get one. Uh, I'm going to say zero so far at this point, zero or one. Mm-hmm. Uh, it takes a lot to win a slam, right? Uh, I don't want to be like every other. I don't know. I don't want to be like every no other, say. every other YouTube channel, man. Some new player comes I don't out know. and they're always I'm not like, picking anybody. they're going to be the goat. They're going to be the goat. I'm not picking anybody. We got anymore. a long way to go before Alcaraz wins a slam. Yeah. Um, it would be synonymous with Radu Kanu winning her slam. 
right? If you asked me before the U.S. Open started ever again, I wouldn't tell you Ryder Khan would win it. She did. It could happen. But there was some there was a lot of luck involved in that one. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, shit. For, oh, backwards hat. He mentioned name a list of people that have failed that wear a backwards hat. Let, let's bring them up. Andy Roddick. Didn't no, he said the less successful. I'll, I'll, I'll name yeah, them. Yeah, so Andy Roddy was successful with his. Or the least one. successful. No, he said who he was the last successful. Okay, who were so the last successful people that wore their hats backwards were Roddy, Hewitt, Hewitt, Patrick Rafter. Yeah, what about uh, did Borna Chorch wore his hat backwards? But he wasn't even win a slam. Oh, you're talking about just slams or just yeah, tennis people players that, that won always slams. wear their hat backwards? People that won slams that like, wear their hat backwards. Yeah, those were the three. Like Marcelo Rios never won a slam. Never won. Um, I'm trying to think who else wore their, their hats backwards. Uh, did no, Nadal did. did Once, Nadal sometimes would wear did, some type did, practice. Did, did Max Wielander wear his hat backwards? He wore a bandana, didn't he? Or Pat Cash? Did Pat Cash or are they both bandana guys? Max Wielander and Pat Cash? Mm -hmm. You, I mean, I remember was that. It, no, I thought it was a, a was, was Pat Cash and Max Wielander both bandana guys, or did one sport a hat backwards? Uh, I forget. I don't remember. And it wasn't too common back in our era. No. Right. Yeah. The, the the whole backwards hat. I Makes think no Roddick, sense. I think Roddick and Hewitt were the one that um, you know, would wear it. That was their style. And yeah, it makes no sense to benefit the player. It, it doesn't keep the sun out of your eyes. I, I mean, I think I think um, Zebra. Dennis Shapovalov. Oh yes, Dennis Shapovalov. But he's Shapo. not successful. So John Isner. That's right. That's right. He's another hat backwards guy. Mm -hmm. Born a Chorich was Richard Gasquet used to wear his hat backwards. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, what's his name? Adrian Manorino, when he had hair, wore his hat backwards. Mm -hmm. um, last last person to wear a wig that was successful. I don't know the answer. I can see. <laughs> I can see wore a wig. Yeah, you said. I you read his read. book and I didn't read that. I thought you said he read his book. Didn't I? I did. Wore a wig. He said he was losing his hair and he wore his hat with the hair. I didn't know that. Isn't that I, true, I, I guys? Totally Come on, that. someone that, that 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 knows about tennis here. I thought he had a wig. That's what he said. Well, well, speaking of the Agassi book, I didn't like the book. I, I when I got to a certain point of, it, and I'm like, the man, this this guy's crying the whole time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Berrettini. Yeah, that's that's why he won't be successful. Guy. He's got to move the hat He's forward. Got to flip the hat around. <laughs> or move it to the side, maybe. Maybe the side should you, be a new style. You know, if if a hat is to benefit a tennis player, it should be a wide brim hat. You know, that goes all the way around. That's like what I wear when I coach. So I wear my wide brim hat um, because it keeps the sun off of. Of all areas, so I have it here. Let's. Why wouldn't a player? I'll bring it to you. You can read questions. Right Corton, Corton wore a hat backwards. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So see, this this is my coaching hat. So when I coach, I wear this hat, and it. Yeah, so it's like this, and then I. Even though you've been forgetting to wear. Yeah, so I wear mm -hmm. this coaching. He hasn't worn so, days. So why don't players wear a hat like this? Because it's tough to play with these hats. Well, if you're running, it it catches air. And it, and it kind of pushes off your head, so you have to leave it kind of strapped down. It's tough to play with and that. Then it, and then it becomes a little laborious, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, I wear this coaching. It's he's, he's forgotten it a few days. One thing I know for sure is that, you know, um, Rafa, you know, he should have never wore the bandana. The, what do you call them? The, the bandanas? Yes. Yeah. He's lost his hair. Like, you know, it's not good, all that sweat and stuff. You know, not good. You gotta let your head head breathe, head your hair or your head or your scalp breathe. All right, first first round matches at Indian Wells. I'm not gonna read all of them. There's a bunch, but notable. Um, the men's is not even the, out. The men's it doesn't come out to a little bit later, um, and surely a lot of people will do that. Um, but the Sloan Stevens Osaka match is intriguing. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm gonna keep up with Anisi Mova on this tournament. By the way, <laughs> Yastremska Garcia is gonna be interesting, and don't forget. Um, what was the gentleman's name? Uh, <laughs> trouble mind. I appreciate that. Yeah. It's, so I, <laughs> it's a grandma. look, <laughs> can I, can I, can I at least, can I at least justify why I wear that hat? Can I at least, and you can go back to some of our videos. Uh, and, and I had something on my face called a basal cell carcinoma. I actually had four of them and I had to go through something called mo surgery. So they bring you to a chair um, and then they give you local anesthesia and then they start removing chunks of your skin. I'm not talking about just the top. I mean, they cut down to the meat and then you lay there and then they go into a lab and, and find out if they got all the cancer out. Um, so I had one, um, that was right here. Oops, sorry. That's eBay. Uh, but I had one that was right here and it was growing near my eye and, and it was so close to my eye that the doctors were scrambling to get it done because they said, if the cancer got in my eye, you don't want to have your eye removed. Um, so 
where did this come from? The sun. So since I was very young, I started tennis at two. I, I have coached snowboarding, uh, skiing, uh, surfing. It, I, I, You're I've been, defending the old hack. I, look, however, every time I have gone to one of these Mohs surgeries, and there's been four of them on my face, every time the dermatologist said, Justin, you're lucky that one of these has, or all these have been caught very early, but the one near your eye could have been prevented or, or if it wasn't prevented, would have taken out your eye and you can prevent all of this in your lifetime of sun exposure by wearing a wide brim hat. I'm very fair skin. I got light green eyes. Mm -hmm. The sun bakes me. I don't get tan. I get burnt. Like she's dark, you know, she keeps the tan year round. Every time I go to the store with her, by the way, especially Walmart, Three people style. Hey, girl, where'd you get your tan? Man, you got a nice tan. How many times do I hear that walking through the store every day? Yeah, Which is old, good. I, I had an old, an, like an older gentleman. Like, he kept looking at me, looking at me, looking at me. I'm guessing God. he was like 60. Then he finally came up to me. I think it was yesterday. He said, are you tan? Is that natural? Are you tan? Like, how did you get your tan? Yeah. I just said I'm on the tennis court every day. I didn't feel like going through the whole thing. Yeah. So if you're here's a question. If, if you're a guy or if you're a female, vice versa, the same context. And you're married to someone or you have a girlfriend or whatever, and you're walking around and, and they, they are always getting compliments. Are you jealous or are you grateful knowing that that's yours anyway? What, what type of dude are you? I know guys that actually get upset about that. For me, man, when I hear people talking about, damn, your legs, damn, your tan, I'm like, come on, let's go. Why are you bringing me through? Come on, let's go. You know, I get pumped up about that. But I know guys that get pissed about stuff like that, don't you? Yeah, yeah. No need, man. No I need. Guess. Don't yeah. do it. Don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it. Um, yeah. I, I, is that it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's why I wear the hat, though. That's why he wears. I wear that. That's hat. why he wears the grandma. That would be big news, Ellis Fire. If Roth ever shaves his hair, it would be big news. How would How would he look? Ugly. I wonder if there's an app. Is there a, Is there an app that you can go to on your phone and come up with a picture of Nadal without hair? There's got to be one. Well, I think they would all look ugly if they have shaved. Now, only a few people can. Um, can pull that off. Okay, who are some shaved? Who are some the, shaved? The Rock. Okay, The Rock could be one. It aren't aren't um, Austin. <laughs> aren't Luke and um, Luke Jensen? Isn't Luke, yeah? Luke they look Jensen, better than the Jensen the brothers. Ha yeah. have, the, have the shaved heads. Who yeah, some, Blake is another. James one shaved, Blake is yeah. another shaved head. Mm -hmm. Adrian Manorino is another. Adrian Manorino used to wear the hat though. He was a hat guy. Now I just get hot looking at his head on the court. Mm -hmm. um, and then now if he gets down, he might end up injured. Um, seems to be the story of his past recently. Yeah, I don't know who else has a shaved head. Shaved head tennis players. Mm. Charles Barkley's got a nice shaved head. Some guys, Mi Michael Jordan. Some guys can pull it off, you know. But it's it's hard because if you've seen someone with long hair the whole time and they shave their head, you're like, I wonder. I wonder, I wonder if we can Google that tennis players with no hair. You look fine with your hair low. Too. Well, oh, I, I'm keeping my hair. Uh, I also heard that the longer your hair is. You, your brain uh, thinks better. You got more DNA. You got more brain power. Okay, Agassi. Agassi. Okay. He actually looks better with his head shaved so, than when he did with his long hair. There's Agassi. I always thought he looked stupid with that fake ass long hair. Let's go James Blake. How about that? Yeah, we know James Blake. Okay, here's Blake. Okay. James Blake. I remember when he had the break, when he had the little break, oh, curls or something when he first came out. Let's go Adrian Manorino. Mm -hmm. Just put tennis players with no hair. That's a good point. Okay, here's Manorino doing his yeah, thing. Yeah, some players look, look decent with it. Yeah, he's doing his Another thing. Another one that would probably look still good with it is um, Fusevich. I'm sure that he would look good with short hair. He does have short hair. Yeah, but even shave head. Marton Fusevich. Uh, I looked up bald tennis players, and, and that's about what came Pete up. Pete Sampras needs to go to the same thing because he's losing his hair. Yeah, Pete So Sampers is Andy Murray. Well. Andy Murray's losing his hair as well. Yeah, uh, uh, Agassi and Blake tend to be the two, mm -hmm. uh, the two bald guys. Um, anyway, um, is that it? Oh, yes, no, oh, Barty not playing. Someone asked me, What do you think of Barty not playing? I think not it's probably smart. smart, very smart. She just, she just won, won the Australian she just won Open. The Australian Why burn Open. yourself out? Yeah, yeah, there was one thing. Oh, um, and then I heard the French Open is lifting their vac vaccination requirements. Is this factual now, or are we going back and forth, back and forth? Just not sure. I think we cover, I, I think we go, oh, not Manorino, call um, him Manorino, Manorino. Manorina. Yeah, this is unimportant. Never mind. Okay. Um, I think that's about it. All right. So, so we're pretty good. 
All right, guys. Well, someone told me it was still it was drizzling out there. I said, "Can you guys send me pictures?" Because I don't want to make a long trip. It's yeah. So we, we we normally are teaching at this point in time. Um, the the racket club that 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 we um are the the tennis pros currently is about what thirty five miles away. Mm -hmm. So it's raining. It's like a fifty percent chance of rain all day, and we don't have the internet there. So we would kind of just sit there without really. So it's tough for us just to run there when it stops raining. So mm -hmm. we don't want to drive 45 minutes away and then have it start raining. And then we have to drive all the way back. And plus our kids go to school here. So it's very difficult for us to just jump up and leave. If there's a high chance of rain, generally it's not in our best interest to go, especially with $5 or $4 a gallon for gas. We were talking about that earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so very, very difficult, especially with five children. You know, we have to pick up the children from school. Otherwise they walk back. And then if it's oh ride their bikes, but if it's, we use the ball machine, if it's now, raining, yeah, we do, we have been using the ball machine. To yes, we do use. I think I have a couple pictures. Let me show you a couple pictures, by the way, since we have this computer. Going. Oh, by the way, anybody and any advice on phone? My phone is like I can barely see it. So here, here's my my dad is is 84 years old. Let me see if I can make this bigger for you. So my this is my dad. He's 84. Uh, and he's with my three of my five children. That's Gabriella with the light blue shirt on little Justin jr. In the middle. And then Liliana kind of partially covered up by my dad, but they're out there working on the ball machine right there. And that was just what? Yes. No, yesterday, the day before yesterday, yesterday. that, that was Sunday. So I'll show you a couple more pictures of just some of the recent, the recent stuff. Um, so by the way, if you ever want to see everything about, um, wh what we do, if you go to Facebook, um, if you're on Facebook or go to Instagram and look up 5k tennis, 5k space tennis, or you can go to Facebook and look up our personal page, which is J U S T I N. So Justin space, Carla C A R L A space Davis D A V I S. And we'll accept your, 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 your request. And then you can see what we do, um, really at every day. Uh, so I'll show you a couple um, just for, you know, shits and giggles, I'll show you a couple, um, just things from the past couple of days. And it's, it's been a really active past couple of days. So, um, here's the courts watering them. So pretty cool. Well, does it turn? Does it seem to work? There you go. I have, that's such a luxury to do this because we never had the computer. So kind of watering the courts. We got the sprinkler system set. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's show you some teaching lessons. Let's go. So I think we have some really young students. So this is Carla with, I think this is Julian, right? So Julian is six. So Julian's six. That's He's a little Julian. He's about six, yeah. So six-year-old. Um, this is from just the day before yesterday. Mondays are off day. So we went to the store yesterday. So Carla with Julian and his brother Finley, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Finley. Yeah. Doing mm -hmm. good. Let's see if we can find some other things here. There's plenty of them. So this was, this was the day where uh, we were talking about using the ball machine. So here they are using the ball machine. Some more. Let's see ball machine. And he comes out and works with, with our kids because as coaches, the problem is, is we don't have, we're completely full with other people's kids. So it's always a blessing when, when my dad can come out um, because he is able to, 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 to teach the kids that otherwise are struggling to find court time. So here's the lovely Carla right here, getting some action in. She's always fun to watch. I love her serving motions. Nice and fluid. They said the iPhone 12 was good. Mm -hmm. I think you can get that free from Verizon, right? Yeah, that's why I was looking. That's why I, I well, that's what they say free, but I wanted to talk to someone. You know. Yeah, and then I don't know if I play my own video here. Does no, it? I wouldn't. I just send them. Yeah. Anyway, there's. Uh, I, I did a video with um, a Woody. So I was playing tennis with the Woody. I, I play with the Woody a lot, by the way. I played with the Woody almost the entire day. Uh, the other day, um, your shoulders not killing you. No, it feels good. I, I I grew up playing with the Woody, so I played with the Woody. I think for like three or four lessons in a row. Uh, and I challenged a couple of our students. I told them I would give them $200 if they beat me using a Woody as well. So this is a couple of our students. So this is Carla, Mary, Michael, um, awesome young girl. She's going to um, Birmingham Southern. No, no she's going Sanford. to Sanford. Mm -hmm. And then that's Gabe next to me in the red. And he's going to Mobile College. And that's me on the right. 
and we played doubles. Uh, we beat them six, four, <laughs> uh, we beat them six, four, six, one in, in a, in a tight battle. So that was a fun day. And that again was the same day as the rest of these days. So this is all in one day. Um, this is the park. There's a little park at the club. So the kids get to go up to the park, kind of chill out. So those are my four kids. Well, we have five, but those are the four at the park. And I'll just show a couple more. Carla does cardio tennis. She does cardio tennis, right? Mm -hmm. So she has a group of ladies that come out and we do, uh, we do, like uh, obstacle courses uh we, we do and we incorporate tennis with it so we we call it cardio tennis so here's kind of that group right they have a really good time it's who's in that group there's leanne there's, there's so many i don't know we're supposed to have it tomorrow but it looks like um rain tomorrow yeah and 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 shout out to adam friel uh at diadem he is uh, a really good guy um and what where's our time on this where are we at time wise 59 and so uh adam friel uh shout out to adam he always sends us these diadem banners um to put on our courts diadem is a really fine company um we use diadem exclusively at this point um at least for rackets we use a, a few other sources for strings but currently i'm playing with their solstice 16l uh, really good string for sure. Enjoying it a lot. Uh, but their DM Nova 100 is what I play with currently as a racket stamp from Racket, and she plays with the Elevate 98. Um, and we grab other demos sometimes, but we always go back to 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 the Elevate and Nova. Wonderful hitting rackets. Here's some of the here's some of the obstacle courses that we'll put out on the courts for the students and so forth. Uh, but anyway, I mean that's just kind of a look at all of our days. Um, and uh, I'll do the last one. So this is Liliana, our 12-year-old. Um, that's the young 12-year-old uh, that we talk about a lot on the left, right, with the white shirt, shirt on is Lily. And that's Mary Michael um, with the red strings there in the black shirt. So uh, shout out to her as well. So anyway, all in a day's work. So um, hopefully uh, we'll see you guys very soon. If it rains, we'll do another show. Mm -hmm. um, and Gene Swartz says go for the – iPhone 12, come on. And they donated more money. <laughs> I'm not sure what ZR is. It must be a denomination. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I still told him, stop giving me your money. <laughs> yeah. We need we need to give you more money. Yeah. Um, anyway, super, super nice young man is Gene, and, and he's a fine young man at that with a wonderful family in South Africa. All right. Guys, much love. Don't forget to subscribe, and we will see you guys the next time it rains. Um, we will do periodic Indian Which Wells. Be tomorrow. Yeah, we will do periodic Indian Wells updates. And, and look, I, I just, I hate to be like a, you know, like I don't want to be negative or anything, but there's so many young little teeny bopping YouTubers. There's nothing wrong that, with that. I know, though. but there's so many of them. There's and, and nothing there, wrong I with know, that. but they, it's there's like the copycat thing. So I don't want to be, be I don't, a hater. Can I finish my train of thought? Yes. Go ahead. I don't want to be number 28. Number Do you see what I'm saying? I, it's watered down enough. I, um, during majors, we've always done it during majors, but because there's so many of them, I, I don't want to jump on the bandwagon. We, we've we always done majors, and, and then we do shows when we can, but we will do updates during Indian Wells, but it's not going to be you know live streaming. and uh, We'll do a few, though, for sure. All right. All right. And we'll do some random giveaways. We'll do some cash giveaways of some sort during Indian Wells, and the only thing you have to do to get them randomly given to you is just subscribe. It's free. Um, anyway, so we'll do giveaways. So how about this? The net while Indian Wells is going on, we'll do a couple of cash giveaways. Um, be ready for those. Next time we do a show, then we'll do a giveaway. Okay. Um, we'll see you then. All right. Peace. This computer thing's cool. And yes. <laughs>